Hey, this is Nick Green, Hollywood on Trail. Today we're talking about a really serious question. Should you use hiking poles when you're backpacking? The answer? Yes. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. <laughs> Honestly though, I find them extremely beneficial. Years and years ago, decades ago, when I started hiking, I did not use trekking poles. But as the mileage starts ramping up and you start to get a little bit older, you find that they are wildly helpful. I went from using no trekking poles to using one trekking pole and just looking like a cool old a wizard, like Gandalf or something, just like trudging through the forest. And slowly but surely, I am now in the to trekking pole category. I definitely don't use anything fancy. These are my trekking poles. Kind of looks like Christmas. This one a fellow hiker gave me because I was in need of one. And this one I found because I was in need of one. The beautiful adage on trail is that the trail provides and it certainly did in the case of my trekking poles. On the Appalachian Trail, I was using one for a long time and then when I got up past Pennsylvania, New Jersey area, I was uh, taking batting practice using my pole. I was hitting rocks clear over the lake and all of a sudden, uh, I was left with just a handle. So <laughs> there went my pole. And that very night, I showed up to a shelter in Delaware Water Gap. It's the one right behind the church. Uh, it's really cool, actually. And lo and behold, there was this beauty right there for me to take. Uh, someone had left it because they didn't need it anymore or they forgot it or something. And anyway, the trail provided and I was able to uh, reignite my trekking pole love affair. It opens, whoa, look at that dirt flying everywhere. All right. It opens and closes exactly the way you need it. And that's pretty much all I want from a trekking pole. Yes, you can certainly buy more expensive lecky trekking poles. Um, that are a lot lighter, a lot more durable. They're not going to have duct tape on them. They're not going to get all beat up like these. They're made out of really nice material, but they are indeed very expensive. And hey, if I had the money to dish out, I probably would buy some. But considering I'm a hiker and nature outdoor enthusiast slash actor who's union is on strike slash youth educator. Uh, I don't have tons of money just to throw at hiking poles. So uh, these are mine and they work just fine. This is my wife's trekking pole. It's a little bit lighter than mine and she got it on Amazon for like 25 bucks or something like that. She got a pair of these. As you're using trekking poles, you'll find a multitude of beneficial ways to use them. One will be crossing rivers and streams. They're actually a huge asset when you're crossing kind of uh, free flowing, heavy flowing, deep rivers, and you can really stake them in there and use them as leverage to cross. Um, it's kind of tough to just do it with your feet, especially when, when it's moving pretty quickly. And I found that poles are a wonderful way to assist you. I also keep them right in my tent um, on the side. A little bit of a security blanket, I would say. Uh, if something's gonna come try to grab me in the middle of the night, I have my pole right there to <laughs> whack them across the head. Uh, so if, whether or not it would work, I don't know, but it makes me sleep just a little bit more soundly knowing I have my poles right there next to me. If you are someone who has an ultralight tent, Z-Packs or something like that, you need poles to help your tent stand up if it's not a freestanding tent, which a lot of the ultralight ones are not. So a trekking pole comes in handy to help your shelter get set up at night. I've even been in situations where I've like stretched my trekking pole out, I've hung it from a tree or I've rather placed it in between two branches on a tree, something like that, and then I'm able to put my clothes on and dry them overnight or dry them when the sun finally comes out. So again, another really wonderful uh, resourceful tool these things are. It's not so much for going on a steep incline that I like to use these things, but going on a decline, I really enjoy using poles. I hate going downhill. I know it sounds crazy, but I think going uphill is just a little bit easier than going downhill. You don't hear of too many people like twisting an ankle or tearing an ACL going uphill very, very slowly. It's typically when you're going down, you twist your ankle, you you step in between two rocks or on a jagged rock or something like that, and that's where, where you can really get hurt. So using poles to stabilize yourself as you're going down some pretty gnarly terrain, uh, I thought was, was 
wonderful and, and a really big benefit for me. They also just kind of feel cool and look cool. I don't know, when I picture a hiker, I picture them with poles. And I, I know we're hiker trash and we don't really care what we look like. That's kind of the whole point. Uh, but there's something meta about that too. Like it's part of the image that we're trying to uphold. And uh, part of the not caring image is carrying around two gross looking uh, poles that you're just slodging around everywhere. Slodging is a good word. It's kind of like looking the part, acting the part, feeling the part. Uh, it it kind of just makes me feel like I'm chugging along. And you know what? There, it's not just mental either. Like when I'm when I'm really cranking out miles and I'm going, and you hear that rhythm, the doom, 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 and it's like clanging on rocks and that sort of thing. There's something to that. It, it's it's a really nice way to to get a hiker trance and really just crank out your miles for the day. And on a long distance hike, a 2,000 plus mile hike, uh, cranking out miles and getting in a trance is kind of, they're kind of synonymous with one another in my opinion. Sometimes you just gotta lose yourself for a moment and go. And uh, putting yourself in that trance is a lot easier with the sound of your sticks just banging against the dirt and the rocks over and over again. Especially because my pack is a little heavier than other long distance hikers packs because I bring my camera gear along with me. I definitely want something to stabilize me. Some people who are like 10 pounds, 12 pounds, something like that all in, those crazy fools uh, that I love so much <laughs> and envy. They probably don't need poles as much as someone like me who carries around a 30 to 35 pound all in pack. If you are hiking in any bit of snow, I highly suggest using poles, especially ones that have this little uh, plate right here, this little dish. That helps you stabilize yourself on the snow so much. And if you don't have this, it still helps, but it'll kind of stink right through. But these things are really important. It, it's like a skier using uh, their poles. Obviously, it's the same thing here in the snow. So using these things in the snow, I find to be thoroughly beneficial. You also don't need to use them all the time. You can collapse them down to you know something as small as this and you can stick them right on your backpack and you don't have to use them. And it's not very much weight to carry around on top of your pack, just kind of stick them right in there. I know if I'm doing some scrambling, some bouldering, something like that, I'm rock climbing, uh, or I'm doing something where I need my hands. Mahusik Notch uh, is a wonderful example of this up north on the Appalachian Trail. You're not gonna wanna use your sticks on this, so just put them in your bag, kind of get through it, and you can resume stick activity afterwards. So you're not totally committed to it all the time. It's also one of those things where you just gotta try it out, you know? If you find that you're using them, you don't really enjoy them, just leave them at the next shelter with a nice note saying, hey, if you were taking batting practice with your pole and uh, tossed it into a big lake and you need a new one, here it is. How high up to hold your stick is another question, and that is totally personal. I do not hold it high up at all, actually. I've seen some people like really high, like up to their neck or some, up to their neck or something like that, holding them up here, chugging along. I like to use it to where my arm is basically parallel to the ground. So not up, not down, but just kind of parallel to the ground. And here's what I do. I actually stick my, my wrist in it. And instead of holding it, I kind of just let it drop a little bit. So it's holding my wrist and giving it a little more support. And I hold it kind of like down here. A little bit more instead of holding it up here I let it drop and hold it down here and I find that to be really comfortable one other little benefit that this provides is you're working with your legs all day long this is an opportunity to kind of get that tricep work as you're pushing down maybe even a little like delt work a little back work something like that to get your upper body in the mix as well it sounds silly but I'm serious too to alleviate your legs a little bit from all the work they're doing all day, to put some of that on your arms, on your upper body, actually does help in my opinion. So um, it spreads out the workload a little bit and uh, whatever can help you get that next mile, I'm, I'm gonna try that out. And that's about it. So if you do not use poles, I understand. It's totally fine. I hear you. I used to be one of you as well. Some of the best hikers that I know, best in terms of uh, they just get out there and do it, they don't use poles and they're just fine. They don't care about it at all. They don't care what I'm saying right now at all. But if you're kind of leaning back and forth, going one way or the other, you're not quite sure, if my word means anything, which it may or may not, I highly suggest them. In any case, poles, no poles, one pole, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you get out there and get some miles in and have a blast, enjoy the outdoors. And just remember, if you can't carry it in your pack or in your soul, you don't need it.